Do you like scary movies? What about true crime? Are you into anything spooky? Why well, you're in the right place. Welcome to Creep It 100. Hello and welcome to the Creep It 100 podcast. I am Mark. I am Kinson. And we are your killers today. Yes. <laughs> and I am done with this gag. Didn't snap my costume away. That was weird. No, yeah. That was only me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, today we're going to be talking about the um, newest Scream movie, Scream 6. Mm-hmm. And this is an obvious spoiler warning for those who have not seen it because it is new. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it, what the fuck are you doing watching this podcast? Uh, Go true. see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your history with the Scream franchise, because I've only—I know you've only seen a few. Yeah, I have only seen the first one, the fifth one, and now the sixth one. Okay, I have not seen anything in between, um, and I've only—I've s- kind of seen the first one. I have not sat there and watched the first one like in an environment when I was like ready to watch a movie. Mm-hmm. It's been like in passing, which is strange because I love the two. Matthew killers Miller. in that one yeah like they're like they're like some of my favorite people to watch in movies so i don't know why i've never never like sat there and watched the entire thing i think the only time we ever watched it was when we were super drunk here and i can't even remember that day it was when <laughs> it was when we drank wine and coronas that's why and it was and then we had the worst hangover in the entire world you know, and it was a jumbo bottle of wine yeah. each yeah we each had a bottle of wine that each. we drank barefoot moscato hell yeah <laughs> and I had to work then. I remember I woke up and I felt terrible. I went to a dinner with my grandparents in the morning. A dinner in the morning? Yeah. Right on, dude. <laughs> dinner for breakfast. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I've only seen those three. There's a lot of people don't love the fifth one. I liked the fifth one a lot. I mean, granted, like I said, I haven't seen any of the middle ones, so maybe I wouldn't have liked it as much if I'd seen those. But I liked it. Right on. Except for one specific part. Same thing with this one. Every Scream movie has that. I hate it. I hate the breakdown monologue. Actually, I specifically hate five and sixes. You hate Mindy. You just hate Mindy. I hate Mindy's character so much. (laughs) I hate it. I wish she wasn't a twin. I wish there was just Chad. (laughs) Just Chad would be fantastic. Chad embodied both characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even if he would have put on a wig and just leaned over and said the the whole monologue, I would have liked it. You got beef with that actress, huh? No. Just because of that role. Just because of that role, specifically. Because I feel like I've seen her in other things. I get that. I hate the bitch from Fear Street because her role pissed me off. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the older sister. Right? Older sister? In Fear Street? Yeah. Dina. Yeah. She's, she's, she's. For some reason, I keep thinking that like the, the girl who played Max is her little sister. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's like hella far before. That, <laughs> that's way before she's even born. I just hated it. Was the, she made the dumbest fucking choices in that movie. <laughs> she did. I'm sitting on my cape. <laughs> okay, well, I'm an avid watcher of the Scream series. It's actually my second favorite series. Okay. Right behind Halloween. Interesting. Um, Who could have guessed? I mean, it, for a while there, it was a toss-up. For a while, between it mm. and Ghostface as my like, second favorite. Okay. But I, I think Ghostface takes it. Yeah. It just doesn't really have enough content. It doesn't do it for me anymore. Yeah. It just doesn't. Uh, like we talked about in our eight episodes, there's just not a lot. Of, there's not a ton of rewatch value. No, uh, but we are getting a new HBO series about Pennywise. Oh, really? Yes. I so we'll see if that changes in the next like two years when it gets made. HBO knows how to make a fucking series too. Like, you know? Did you know it. that HBO was offered The Walking Dead and they turned it down? What a mistake! That's what I'm saying. <laughs> actually, and I AMC, actually, AMC said, "Yeah, <laughs> if they made." I actually think that I like AMC having it better. I think if HBO made it, it would be a very different show. HBO has a different vibe that goes along with their shows, Mm -hmm. and I don't think that it would have been as... I don't know. I I can't really know the word, but like The Walking Dead on AMC is such like a TV TV show, and HBO shows are all like tiny movies. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I would have liked watching The Walking Dead as like a tiny movie every single week. I think they would have... I mean, they would have obviously had a fuck ton bigger budget that's why i'm having a hard time with watching the last of us it's the episodes are too long mm-hmm. and oh, the last episode's the shortest one 
I'm, the, I'm pissed. Always. They always I'm do that pissed. shit. Even Disney Plus does that shit. Yeah? Where, yeah. Like, like the last oh, episode of Mando. And the last episode of, uh, what was that fucking Marvel show I liked? WandaVision? Loki? Loki was short, too, if I remember correctly. Loki was. Well, all of Loki was short. They were all, like, 20 minutes. Except not a Marvel podcast. <laughs> True. <laughs> we're getting at a... We're getting, uh, so... We are trying something a little different today. Obviously, I can't sit down and dissect this movie like I'd like to because it's in theaters. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be going off my memory. Yeah, they kicked us out for having the camera. Yeah, uh, they did not like that. Yeah, we tried to film clips for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, we do have some clips. Oh, no That way. have been released by the studio. Oh, cool. Okay. So we will have clips in this movie. Great. You just or let me episode. know when we get to them. Oh, I will. <laughs> and one of these is one of my favorite scenes. Scream 6 is a very different Scream movie. It takes place in New York, uh, and it doesn't follow Sidney Prescott anymore. Mm -hmm. It follows Tara Carpenter and her sister Sam Carpenter. And Sam is the daughter of Billy Loomis, who was the killer in the very first Scream movie. For those mm -hmm. who don't know, yeah, it's a little bit of backstory there. That's really all you need to know. Ski. And he's comes back <laughs> <laughs> again as a fucking ghost as a premonition <laughs> as an entity yeah so the movie opens up with uh i don't know her character name but it's played by samara weaver who i love mm -hmm. and she's in this bar in new york on what can only like it was a dating app i forget what it's called like flirt flirter or something yeah it was something, Some, something like fake, really yeah. fucking fake <laughs> uh and she's supposed to be meeting up with this guy and he calls her and he's like hey i can't find this bar can you come outside and look for me? Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, just look for the red place. Do you see anything red? And he's like, nah, nah. <laughs> and then he starts telling her to go down an alleyway because he's, he thinks that's where we'll eventually meet. So Samara so Weaver goes down this, um, this alley and he's talking to her on the phone and he starts telling her that someone's chasing him and she needs to hurry and get over there. Mm -hmm. And then she gets, she's also a film professor, I forgot to say. She gets halfway through the alley, and then the voice switches over to Ghostface's voice. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you teach a class on slasher films. And you walked down the dark alley <laughs> yeah. on the phone. <laughs> and then she gets jump scared by some people that like run past her. Mm -hmm. And then Ghostface runs out and brutally kills mm -hmm. her. Brutally. Starts stabbing. And in the biggest twist of all time, he takes off his mask. <laughs> yeah. And it's Flash Thompson from Spider-Man. <laughs> <It is. laughs> I like, what the fuck? That is the only thing that I said when that scene happened is I literally, I looked at, uh, I looked at Tim and I said, I said, I said, that's Flash Thompson. I heard a gasp. Someone said, oh, that was me. That was me. <laughs> and I said, I said, that's Flash Thompson. And Tim like looks at it again and like, it like giggles a little bit. Cause I think he was, he thought I was trying to make a joke. No, but it actually. And then, and then like he turned around and it actually was him. And Tim goes, oh my God. <laughs> but his character's name is Jason. Yeah. Uh, so then Jason packs up his ghost face costume. He leaves his... It's his professor, by the way, that mm -hmm. he kills. He leaves and goes back to his dorm. And on his way to his dorm, he passes Tara Carpenter and asks if Sam's going to that party because uh, he wants to finish Richie's movie mm -hmm. and kill her. Pretty dope. <laughs> so... Jason gets back to his uh, dorm and he's looking for his uh, roommate, who is also a ghost face. That we f we find out that they are they were planning to kill Sam Carpenter, mm -hmm. and he gets a call from another ghost face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buckle up, a lot of them, a lot of ghost faces in this movie. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and this ghost face calls him pretending to be his roommate, mm -hmm. and he's like, "How did it feel to kill this woman? How did it feel?" Why'd you do it early? And I think Jason said, I got blue balls, bro. I just really wanted to do it. <laughs> he did. <laughs> and um, really fun thing that's going on in the background is Jason, or Friday the 13th Part 8 is on. Mm -hmm. And Part 8 takes place in Manhattan, mm, which is really okay. a fun that's little... Jason takes on Manhattan yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a fun little parallel there. I know that you geeked about this. Oh, my, there my was boys a last in the back. podcast on the left poster. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and I was like, I saw it real quick, and so I wanted to draw attention to it because I didn't think that there was going to be a whole still shot of him just staring at it. Yeah. for like for like twenty seconds, because then I was like, oh look, oh did you see that? Did you see that? And then it just stay like stays on it for a super long time, and I was like, all right, move along. This is getting embarrassing. <laughs> <It's> embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, he was geeked about that. I know, love them. Yeah, that's one of our uh, biggest inspirations on this show, actually. Is, Absolutely. His last yeah, yeah. podcast Absolutely. on the left. So seeing them get uh, some recognition in a movie like that was so cool. Yeah, that's also when I do my true crime research. If they have one 
about that, I'll listen to like all the parts of it because because they go crazy with like their sources and like things like that. They do a lot of research, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's very nice to give that at least a listen, so that I can kind of understand the entire timeline and then have my own research involved in it. So yeah, it was super cool to see them in there. It was awesome. So uh, Ghostface is um, on the phone with Jason, and Jason thinks this is his roommate, and they start playing hot or cold. Mm -hmm. So um, he can find his roommate. And it gets to the fridge, and it gets hot. And he opens the fridge, and his uh, he's mutilated. His, I think his, his, is his roommate's name like Greg or something? Greg, Greg. is what I thought, yeah. And he's, his, like, he's like decapitated. Mm -hmm. His head's in there, his torso's in there, his arms are in there. Yeah, it's just like just sliced up to make it fit. Yeah. In there. I also forgot to talk about one of the most badass lines, too. After Jason kills Samara Weaver, he goes, now I see something red. And I was like, yay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That was cool. But uh, this is, I think, one of my favorite lines in the movie. It's right here. So Jason turns around and real ghost face. I'm going to call him real ghost face mm -hmm. because he's the actual yes. killer killer in this movie, even though there's been like already seven. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> he kills him. Uh, and as he's killing him, he's like, do you, do, do you feel like human? Do you feel like me? It's, he's basically repeating what he said to him about killing Samara Weaver's character. Yeah. And it's fucked up. And as Jason's dying, he goes, what about Richie's movie? And this is my favorite line. He goes, who gives a fuck about movies? <laughs> and it kills him. Yeah. And we get a nice little Scream 6 title card. Yep. I was, I liked how the movie turned out, but I was a little bummed out. I thought it was going to be really interesting that, the very very first thing that they did was Re show who the killer yeah, is. Yeah, reveal it. And killer. I was like, I was like, wow, that's gonna be a really different vibe throughout this whole movie if we know, because that's gonna that's gonna like make us anxious. Yeah. Because I thought that then the way I thought it was all gonna play out is that then Flash Thompson was gonna go to like the party and they're all gonna be together and there was gonna be a lot of those like like real like uh, like, like thriller scenes. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was gonna be a lot of that and we just weren't gonna know who the other one was. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I just didn't think we were gonna know who like Greg was until the end. Well, but nope. we don't have to worry about that because they're both dead. Nope. And essentially, with them, they were trying to copycat Richie Kirsch, who was mm -hmm. the killer in the last movie, mm -hmm. and finish what he started. Um, and this this current Ghostface, the alive Ghostface, did not like that because mm -hmm. he wants to kill Sam for himself. Yes. Uh, so then after our title sequence, we see Sam's in therapy and she tells her therapist about, um, how she wants to kill people. She's getting urges like her father. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he said, I'm not, I'm not fit for this, bro. Get out. <laughs> yeah. Get out. Yeah. And I'm calling the police. Yeah. And she's like, why, bro? I didn't even do anything, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Cause she said, she didn't say that she wanted to kill people, but she said when she had to kill R Richie, Richie it, it felt, felt right. Good. It felt right. Yeah. She's like, she's like, it felt right. Like, it felt like it was what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, oh, shit. Police? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, he said, I have to report this. <laughs> and she was like, she was like, ugh, you're just like all the rest. And then left. <laughs> I was like, all right, bro. So Sam walks back to her apartment uh, thinking Tara's there, but Tara's at this party. So she's already pissed about that. Mm -hmm. uh, because her other roommate, Quinn, tells her. And Quinn, Quinn likes to get fucked. There's, Quinn's getting clapped in this scene. Like every scene she's getting Almost clapped. Almost every single one that she's in. <laughs> My favorite shit was, what'd she say? She walked in and then uh, and then she can hear Quinn. And like at first it sounds like, like she's like struggling and then you just find out she's getting clapped. And then <laughs> she comes out of the door and then, he's, and then she's like, oh my God, is that Bobby? And then you hear from the in the it's room, very faint. who's Bobby? Who the fuck is Bobby <laughs> from the room? <laughs> from the other guy? I heard that shit made me laugh. I heard bro. you let out a little <laughs> chuckle at that. That's I mean it's funny. Yeah, Quinn is very sex positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is what she says. Yeah, that's that's her that's direct her. quote. Yep. She's calling a a whore. What is inappropriate these days? <laughs> yeah, but someone still does. Yeah, your favorite character. We cut back to the party, and then we we see that. Mindy's with a new girlfriend, Annika. Mm -hmm. We see Chad is with his new roommate, Ethan, and Tara's about to go upstairs with this random ass dude. Mm -hmm. And Chad stops it, and they have a big fucking pushing match. Yeah. And then fucking Sam comes in and actually tases him in the fucking balls. <laughs> yeah. It's nuts. Nice. So they all leave. I was not even. <laughs> that was not even intentional. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. That's just how it works. I thought that they were blowing it all out of proportion until the guy that was about to um, take Tara up there turned around and was like, or she oh. was, she was like, oh yeah. So Chad walked up, was like, it was like, nah, she's good down here, man. And then Tara was like, Tara was like, no, 
like it's okay i want to do this yeah and then the dude like got in his face and goes yeah chad she wants to do this or something like that and i was like oh yeah I, that I pissed me off when when he said that and then that, i was like when he got tased i was like cool hell yeah works for me because <laughs> he was being a tool bag he wasn't at first actually no, he was actually being real nice. He was actually being really nice. And, like, obviously he was doing, like, the whole, like, oh, I have a bottle in my room. You should come up there. Like, obviously that's, like, a that's, that's a very generic Who the play. fuck would go after Fireball like that, though? It's Michael. Yeah. It's nasty. Yeah. Nasty. It's a classic move, but, like, he still was being, like, cool about it. And then he said that, and I was like, ah, okay. So, anyway, we just kind of see that our the, the characters from the old movie are living a nice little college party lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Having a good time. Sam's not really into that, and she's pissed. Yeah. And they're on their way home. She's also a lot older, isn't she? She's not in college. Mm-hmm. Age. Sam's a lot older. Yeah. Uh, and this really sucks, but after she killed Richie, who was the killer in the last movie, she was under a lot of heat, and people are suspecting that she's a killer, like mm-hmm. she was the actual killer. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of all of these theories are going around, and the whole school knows, and <sighs> she gets assaulted with diet cherry Coke, yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I remember correctly. Yes, it is. And they go back home. So they go back to the uh, their uh, apartment, and they find out that there is a killing, mm-hmm. and the ghost face masks were involved. Mm-hmm. And Sam's like, "Let's get the fuck out of here, Tara. I'm mm-hmm. not doing this shit again." And <laughs> Gail Weathers, Courtney Cox's character, who is a what do they call them? A uh, investigative journalist. Oh yes, but what do they call these characters? It's a it's a not legacy. legendary. It's legacy. Thank you, <laughs> legacy character. And Sam mm, declines it. That shit pissed me off. <laughs> oh, yeah, when she called. Because they really built it up and they, like, showed the phone. Yeah. Like, this was about to be, like, some crazy, like, reconnection. And then she goes, ding. And it's the, <laughs> yeah, it's like, the deny like, button. Oh, damn. And I was like, damn, bro. And then Ethan goes, why did everyone get so quiet when the phone started ringing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because so, it turns the camera back to everybody and everybody's just staring at the phone. Yeah, fucking so scared. And he's just chilling. Because <laughs> yeah. he has no idea what the fuck's going on. Yeah. They then tell Quinn, whose dad is um, on the police force, who's mm-hmm. the chief of police uh, in Manhattan. Right to start looking into it and he was go- he goes listen I was actually just about to call you Sam's ID is here mm-hmm. so they get called down to the sheriff's office and on the way to the sheriff's office they get a call from Ghostface and Ghostface is essentially is like I'm gonna fucking kill you yeah watch your back and as he says that Ghostface runs out grabs Tara and Tara like beats his ass for a second and they go into the bodega mm-hmm. and this scene is crazy so when he pops out and then Tara kind of like elbows him backwards, he like he falls into a bike rack, Ghostface does, and then they run around the corner into this bodega. Uh, they immediately start screaming for help inside because there's you know patrons in the in the store. Packed owner. bodega by the way. Yeah, yeah. And so they were immediately like, I'm "What just the saying, fuck?" It's bold like, as get, fuck for Ghostface to even go in there. Yeah, I didn't think he was gonna follow. I thought it was gonna be like, a, "Oh, these girls are crazy," kind of thing. Yeah. But no, he he strolls right in after him, and then the dude who was like who was sitting there like, "What the fuck are you guys talking about? Like, move! You're being fucking crazy." Walks up to Ghostface and is like, is like, is like, buddy, do we have a fucking problem? And then he just instantly stabs the shit out of him like <laughs> ten times, and then he stabs somebody else, and he's just he's just mass killing all of a sudden. And then the uh, the shop owner pulls out a shotgun from behind the counter and aims it at him, and then he just does like a a, a dive tackle out of the way, a whole ass dolphin dive. Yeah, just running away. And held B for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that shit was insane. Crazy. And then throughout the scene, he he um. Sam and Tara are hiding in the shop. Or originally, they're told by the shop owner who has the shotgun, go out of the back. Yep. The back is locked. So while they're about to go out of the front, Ghostface gets the upper hand against the shop owner and gets the shotgun. So now they're hiding in between like the four aisles of this little bodega. And they're like going around. And it's like a very like, like hold your breath, scary scene. Ghostface is just trying to listen for any noise of them crawling about. Oh, also Ghostface was shooting a bunch of the glass, so wherever they're crawling, yeah. he'll be able to hear. This Ghostface was calculated. He's smart as hell. Calculated. And we find out why later. Sam picks up a can, mm-hmm. like an empty beer can, and throws it on the other side so that he looks the other way. Yeah. Um, Doesn't really help, though, because the glass, and they start moving. And yeah, then Ghostface, and then he- when he turns around... I forget, is it Tara or Sam that pushes that whole shelf on him? It's both of them. They do? Yeah, so he's directly on the other side of an aisle, and he hears glass, he starts to turn around, and then they just push the shelf on top of him and start to run out. Yep. And then they're immediately met by the police. And taken. Yeah, like swarming up. Yep, and they straight up just take him. Take him. Yep. And then he, uh, and then they when they go in, uh, Ghostface is gone. And all that's left is just a mask sitting on the floor. 
We then later find out that that mask had DNA traces of Richie Kirsch on it. Mm-hmm. So it was his, it was Richie's old mask. Yeah. And this detective, he's just like, is there anyone that would like want to kill you guys? And Tara says, not anyone al- alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You shouldn't say shit like that. And then, like, right after that, FBI claims jurisdiction on the case. Mm -hmm. And then we find out that Kirby Reed from Scream 4 is working for the FBI. Emma, this is one of the clips I have. It's her introduction. Special Agent Kirby Reed, FBI. I work out of the Atlanta office. Mm. You lost. Here are two Vicks for residents of my city before they moved here for college. I have been investigating their online activity for the past few months. Why? They take a special interest in ghost face attacks. Kirby? Hey, Sam. What? She's back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen her. I know. That's from why my, I, tried, from, I tried to show you the... For my viewing. Yeah. I tried to show you that scene where she got stabbed in Scream 4. Yeah. And left for dead. Uh, but yeah, she's back and she's very, very interested in ghost face cases, obviously, because she's got a very personal connection with them. Yeah. And then her and the detective, excuse me, this was wrong. The mask left at the bodega belonged to Charlie Walker and Jill Roberts from Scream 4. The mask left at Jason's, Flash, at Flash Thompson's house. At Flash Thompson's crime scene was, was Richie. Was the one with Richie, okay. Yes, that's, that was it. So, so now there's two real ghost face masks that have just been left at yeah. two crimes back to back. Yes. And they're like, and Kirby has a... Re- she was stabbed by Charlie Walker. So yep. she's, she's super invested and she's kind of explaining all the different ghost faces to our detective here. Sam and Tara start leaving mm-hmm. and they get surrounded by press, yep. including Gail Weathers, which was amazing. This was such a good like comeback scene. Mm-hmm. She like slides in the frame all badass with yeah. this blue ass suit. Everybody's like, everybody's like, oh, what do you, what do you have to say for yourself? Are you a suspect? Uh, Samantha, is there, or, or Sam, is there anything you want to tell us? Oh, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, and then... And then she, yeah, she slides right in, and then she says, like, her whole little intro of, like, Channel 7, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Sam's pissed because she wrote another book, mm-hmm. even though she said she wasn't going to. Yeah, talking shit about him. And there was a nice little throwback to Scream 1, where she throws a punch, and Gail's ready. She knows. She dodges it. Mm-hmm. Well, she wasn't ready for Tara's punch. <laughs> yeah. And then she gets clocked by Tara, who just punches <laughs> right after her. <laughs> I burst out laughing the first and, time I saw that yeah, scene. Yeah, and nobody does shit. Everybody's just like, oh. Like, um, respectable. Yeah. Respectable. That's what you get for wearing that shade of blue. On God. <laughs> On God. So Gail's back, and it's really nice to see her. She's up to her usual goofy business. Right after that, this is when they're they're getting in the taxi, and they're about to go home. Um, they, This is when they go over to the park, and there's like the little monologue, isn't there? Because they discuss, like, shit's back. Yeah. So they, yeah, they do my least so favorite Mindy scene. So Mindy does her... You hate this shit. I hate so it. So I think I want to. I want to let you talk about it. Okay. They do like the classic like breakdown monologue that is in every single screen movie. The reason I hate it in this one particularly is because like it just feels so like it feels too modern. Like they use so many little like internet buzzwords and like pop culture references to where it's like, dude, I know this was made this year. It's okay. You don't need to solidify the timeline by telling me a bunch of buzzwords about it. And then they also, like, it gets really, really meta where they start talking about their own movie in the movie. And I'm like, Let's just stop. Let's also talk about, I want to talk about this because it pisses me off. About oh, yeah. legacy <laughs> yeah, you, characters you, you, dying. And they said, they said Laurie Strode. Mm-hmm. Who is not who is dead. not dead. Yeah. But they, yeah, they name, they name her among a lot of other characters. Yeah, they name her, and they don't even, it's not even horror movies. It's, they name her, they do Nancy Thompson, uh, Luke Skywalker, Luke Skywalker, Iron man. man, and James Bond. Yep. Which are all very good, other than Laurie Strode, because she's alive. Yeah. Very good references. So, yeah, they're basically doing like the, it could be you, it could be you, it could be you, and she makes special note of, um, of the roommate. Quinn. Quinn. Ethan, Ethan. Chad's new roommate. And uh, Annika. And her Annika, own her own girlfriend, saying that, listen, it's probably not any of us because we already deal, dealt with this shit. No, she said it. No, she was like, and you're number one on my suspect list. And she pointed at Ethan. Yeah. And he was like, and he was like, why am I on the list? And then, <laughs> and then he was like, and then he said, am I even friends with these guys? <laughs> and then I think it's Annika that says, that says, 
you guys are also on the list. Mm-hmm. Like, it could be one of you. What if, like, the killing of last year drove you fucking crazy and now you're going to do it? Yeah. And then she was like, mm, probably not. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to you. And so that's when they all go home, back to the apartment, correct? Yes. Correct. And, it's, and it's later this night. Yep. And later that night, um, we kind of find out there's a, there's a neighbor across the street that Sam's been slapping sticks with. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. His name is his name is Cute Boy. His he's actually named after his his first name is he's named his first name is Danny, which is a Shining reference. Okay, and his last name is Bracket, which I'm I know you know what that's from. Officer Bracket, Sheriff Bracket, Sheriff Bracket. Chloe, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the, every character is named after someone. Yeah, that's obviously. why they're Carpenters. Yeah, from John Carpenter. Correct. And Wes from the last movie was named after Wes, Wes Craven. Craven. Rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be honest, I did not think Screamer was going to work. Without Wes Craven, mm. but I think it's 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 fine. I think it's fine. I think it's, I think this it's one's great. I, I think this one is really good. Yeah, they're all chilling, having a good time. Sam comes out and says, "Listen, I'm fucking neighbor boy," <laughs> and they all start having a good little chat at the table. Mm-hmm. They talk about how they're the core four and how they survived the last fucking Woodsboro murder. Yes. Uh, and while this is happening, cute boy Danny Brackett looks out his window and sees Ghostface in Quinn's room, mm-hmm. right above her. Yeah. So he tries to call, and they don't answer. Mm-hmm. So he sends he airdrops this picture of Ghostface like killing Quinn <laughs> to everyone. Yeah, it's like the craziest shit. Yeah, because they just think because they hear Quinn in there, and again they just think she's getting fucking clapped. Because mm-hmm. she was, she was, yeah, <laughs> like five minutes ago. Well, he's dead, and now she's in her room screaming. Yeah. They all kind of slowly approach the door, and then Ghostface kind of kicks the door open and throws Quinn's body on Annika. Yeah. Ghostface then stabs Mindy in the arm, or slices her arm, and then, st- oh, this is so fucked up how he gets Annika. He grabs Annika on, like, a Michael Myers-ass chokehold mm-hmm. and, like, throws her across the room, up against the wall, puts the knife in her, twists it, mm-hmm. and then moves it up. That yeah. was, I mean, it looked... That, that was, was really like, crazy. Hard to watch. And meanwhile, Sam is looking for knives, and all the knives in her apartment are just gone. So she used the knife block to fucking hit his ass. Yeah. And they all walked themselves <laughs> into um, Quinn's room. And across the... So the one building's here, and across the window is Cute Guy's yeah. building. And Cute Guy, Cute Boy, whatever his fucking nickname was, I can't even remember. He brings out a ladder. Mm-hmm. And he, like, extends it to the other side. And Sam crosses. Mm-hmm. No problem. But Ghostface is on that door. Mm-hmm. He's banging, banging on the door down. trying to get in, which is now being blocked by a dresser. Yes, that Mindy put there. And Mindy's yeah. like holding it back and he's telling, or she is telling Annika to go. Yeah. Annika's bleeding out, mm-hmm. like a lot. So Mindy ends up going before her. Annika follows. And as Annika's like halfway through, Ghostface comes in the room and starts fucking with that ladder. Mm-hmm. He starts like just bouncing her, yeah, up and down. He's just he's just completely toying with her. One of the most intense scenes I've seen in horror in a long time. That one, yeah. Honestly, a lot of a lot really, of these scenes really good. were very suspenseful, mm-hmm. and that's what a lot of these movies are lacking these days. Yeah, uh, they did a really good job of it. Like, especially I knew it was going to be good. Actually, I was a little upset when the bodega scene happened so early because I thought that was such a good scene that I was afraid it wouldn't be top. But then they kind of, they kept the same energy of that scene throughout the whole film, including this one. This one was just like, the bodega scene was a little more um, suspenseful. This one was like, you already know what's about to happen. It's like just- the anticipation yeah, of when. He's <laughs> just instilling fear. That's all he's doing. He just wants to fuck with him. So he knocks Annika off that ladder. Yep. She falls to her death. Um, in a brutal way, and then they show a nice close-up of her mangled face, <laughs> which is smacks awful. Smacks her face against the dumpster. Yeah, because she falls down like two stories, and then clips a dumpster on the way down with her fucking head, and then it just shows a big close-up of just her face all messed up. It's totally so mangled. rough. Uh, Detective Bailey then shows up to the scene. He finds out his daughter's dead, mm-hmm. and he's really upset. They took him off the case, but he said, you know what? I'm still going to fucking kill anyone who fucks with my family. That makes sense, because that's when I went to the bathroom. And I was confused, because later, I, when I came back in, um, I knew that Quinn had died, but I was confused, because I was like, I was like, did they ever say his reaction to this, ever? And yeah. they, they did, when I went to you the bathroom. You must have missed it, but yeah, it was, he... it was when I went to the bathroom, and then, because I showed right back up at the next scene, when they're, when Gail is leading them. Yes. Which, that will lead us to our next scene, mm-hmm. where 
Kirby's on this. <laughs> this is so. This was such a great reunion between them because they just don't like each other. <laughs> no, they do not at all. <laughs> Kirby and Gail meet up at the crime scene, and Gail's like, "Listen, I have something to show you guys." And on their way in, Kirby's like, "How the f- did you find this? Yeah, like, I've been looking." And basically, Gail's just like, "I'm just better at my job than you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kirby's like, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they go into this like abandoned theater and it's a shrine to all the previous ghost faces, which is like the craziest shit ever. It's sick. It's badass. It's so sick. I love the fucking stage that With they've all created. The robes. And- yeah. So they've they it, it's like a it's like a theater um, stage that they've that has the curtains. And when the curtains are drawn back, by the way, Roman Bridger's mask from Scream Three was left at that crime scene. So when they pull the curtains back, it is all of the ghost faces propped up on mannequins with all the what used to have all the original masks on them. Mm -hmm. Now all the masks are missing. Um, But that's a cool fucking little area. And then Billy's is is in this big glass case (laughs) with with the real knife. Mm -hmm. like still like setting like up on the peg it's it's super cool i love that it wasn't even just ghostface like out out in like the lobbyish area you see like victims and there like you see tatum's clothes yeah he literally had like a little museum of all the crimes and then where there's a projector shooting out is a painted ghostface mask it's it's awesome and it's coming and the projector's coming out of his mouth yeah it's pretty sick so we get a little bit of bonding moments there between some of our legacy characters and our new characters Basically, they're saying, fuck it, let's just, instead, uh, he's coming after me. Kirby's basically just like, listen, I can track a phone call in 12 seconds now. I th- it was Sam's, I, Sam's original idea said, hey, he's coming after me. So let's just, let's lead him to me in a controlled environment. Mm-hmm. And so then they set up this little sting in the park. Yep. And they do not allow Gail Weathers there. Yeah. Kirby, Kirby goes, no press. She's like, I'm pretty good at my job, too. <laughs> I yeah. was like, Nail! Right back Nail! at her. <laughs> So, Gail gets sent back to her apartment, and they're doing this sting in the park. And Ghostface, of course, calls Sam, and he's like, listen, I know you think you're going to get me, but I'm one step ahead of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, I know you're tracking my phone right now. Yep. I'm nowhere near you, bitch. <laughs> yeah. And they tracked the phone. Torsi, guess where they went? Guess where Ghostface went, bro? <laughs> Gail's apartment. <laughs> That's right, Josie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gail's apartment, which is fucking great. This is uh, this is my favorite scene in the movie. Is the whole Gail versus Ghostface mm-hmm. sequence? It's really fucking good. So, meanwhile, at Gail's apartment, mm-hmm. she gets a call for the first time in the franchise from Ghostface, and oh, yeah. Yeah. he's just like fucking with her. And we see in the background that Gail's boyfriend's gonna go call nine one one, but he gets attacked by Ghostface. He gets he gets swooped, swooped into a room. up <laughs> quick. Like, yeah, yeah, you barely hear it. You, whoo, yeah, just whoo, <laughs> and he's gone. Um, and Gail's apartment, it's it's like it's luxurious New York. Mm-hmm. It's like a nice little penthouse area. Yeah. And as as he's talking to Gail on the phone, actually, I think this is one of the clips I have. Looks like you're not gonna be able to stop this. Gail runs back inside from the balcony, tries to slam the door on Ghostface, doesn't work. She runs into this little secret room she has. She locks herself in there, starts fucking, there's a safe in there with a gun, and she's panicking, bro. She's mm-hmm. fucking up that code. Yeah, her fingers are fumbling. Yeah. But she finally gets the gun, and she doesn't hesitate and just fires two fucking just bullets into the door. Straight through the door. Then she gets a call from Ghostface, and he's like, oh, maybe you hit me. Maybe you didn't. Maybe I'm on my way to the ground floor in the elevator right now. <laughs> or maybe I'm wearing a bulletproof vest. And then Gail says, that's why I'm going to shoot you in the fucking head. Mm-hmm. So she opens the door and she's looking for Ghostface's bitch ass. <laughs> 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 and it's, this is one of the best moments in, oh my God. in this movie. Probably my favorite. This is probably my favorite like five seconds in the entire movie. <laughs> Basically, Ghostface is still taunting her and he's like, oh, you never were the leading girl and all this shit. That was Sydney, and that was, what does that make you? And Gail goes, that makes me the brains and the sex appeal. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, fair, fair. <laughs> and he's, he's still fucking with her. And then out of nowhere, she goes, can you hold, please? <laughs> and you hear, huh? <laughs> you hear Ghostface go, huh? <laughs> she, she, she puts him on hold, star 69's his ass, mm-hmm. 
and you hear his phone start ringing in another room. And she starts fucking firing her gun into, into that room. The, wherever she heard the sound, she just starts laying bullets in. It's pretty fucking, it's pretty smart. Yeah. Ghostface busts out, stabs Gale in the shoulder and in the thigh. Mm-hmm. They have a big smackdown. They end up, I don't know, I think she pushes him into a coffee table. Mm-hmm. They fall. They fall into a coffee table. Glasses everywhere. Ghostface is knocked out. Gail goes for the knife. She picks up the knife. She's about to stab Ghostface. Ghostface grabs a shard of glass and stabs Gail in the stomach. Lucky for Gail. Mm-hmm. Sam and Tara are already on their way with a gun. Or they, they pick up Gail's gun, excuse me, and they start firing at Ghostface. Ghostface dips. Mm-hmm. If I was them, I'd chase Ghostface. And just, I would chase Ghostface with that gun and, mm-hmm. and try to kill him. Gail passes out. EMS show up on the scene right away. They take Gail out. All this crazy shit goes down. They then decide to make a kill box in the theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they have to take a subway to get there. So they all get on the subway, uh, except Ethan and Mindy gets left behind because it's so crowded. Mm-hmm. On Halloween night, so everyone's in costumes. So we see really fun references like Michael Myers. We see Freddy Krueger, Pinhead, Midsummer Girl, mm-hmm. um, Ready or Not, played by Samar Weaver, which is really fun. Um, and hella ghost faces. Yes. It's all over the train. It's such an eerie scene because they're just sitting there and like minding their business and all of a sudden they actually start to like they like take a deep breath real quick and then start to look around and realize that there's like five ghost face per train and they're just all (laughs) eyeing them yeah they're just looking at each other like seeing what's going on they're all like they will not keep their eyes off these ghost face because they never they don't know if the real one is actually here Unfortunately for Mindy and Ethan, real ghost face is on their train. Mm-hmm. And the lights go out. And they, and they keep going out like periodically on each train for some reason. Mm-hmm. Never, happened, some never happened to me in New York. Really? No. Happened to me. It just depends I saw on, a lot of rats. Depends on which one you take. <laughs> saw a lot of rats and it smelled a lot of smells. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so the lights keep fucking going out and ghost face ends up coming out of the dark and grabbing Mindy and like with his hand over her mouth so she can't scream, mm-hmm. stabs her, leaves her to die, door opens, ghost face goes away. Ethan sees her. And this, this is such, I, I wanted to touch on this like very briefly. Mindy is so sure that Ethan is ghost face. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even on the train, like they're sitting together and she goes, she goes, stay over there, ghost face. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> goes to the other part of the train. She's texting Chad. She's like, I'm on the like, train with safe? Ethan. I'm AKA GF <laughs> ghost face. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but Ethan gets her to a hospital, which is badass. Um, meanwhile, at the theater, everyone makes it there. And uh, cute boy Danny Brackett is also there. And mm-hmm. Sam's like, listen, just go. Yeah. You could be a killer. I don't want you here. So they go down into the theater. Kirby makes it a kill box where essentially there's only one entrance and one exit. They they search around, have a little good time. It's not a good time. Their friends are dying. <laughs> um, a lot of them are pretty fucked up already. Kirby goes missing. Yeah. That's Sam get the call. gets a call from Detective Bailey. Mm-hmm. He says, hey, get the fuck out of there. Yep. Kirby does not work for the FBI anymore. She got laid off. Apparently, she had a real crazy downward spiral, spiral last year mm-hmm. during the ghost face attacks. So they're like, oh, fuck, it's Kirby. Mm-hmm. Then they get attacked by a little ghost face. Definitely a woman ghost face. Mm-hmm. Chad Chad overpowers this ghost face with a camera. Yeah. Uh, and they run through this little hallway and they go to like this little lobby area where they, f- they just gang up on ghost face. Mm-hmm. And this fucking sucks so bad. Another ghost face comes out, stabs Chad. So we have two ghost faces now mm-hmm. and they're both holding Chad, stabbing the shit out of him. I'm sure he gets stabbed maybe 50 fucking times. It's ridiculous. And he's telling, he's yelling at, at uh, Sam and Tara to run run mm-hmm. like i'm i'm gone yeah i'm like, yeah i'm dead I'm like, so they run uh they go to the theater and the two ghost faces run up on them there mm-hmm. actually i think kirby comes out first right and then they're like kirby you're the killer like what are you doing and she's like no 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 like i got one of the ghost faces knocked me out mm-hmm. 
all this shit. And yeah. then Detective Bailey comes in. And then Kirby and Detective Bailey start holding their guns at each other. Mm -hmm. <sighs> this, this shit pissed me off. Kirby's like, I don't listen to a word he says. He's fucking crazy. And then he says the same thing about Kirby. Mm -hmm. Ghostface runs out behind Detective Bailey. And Kirby's like, oh, fuck, behind you. And Detective Bailey just decides to unload his clip into Kirby. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. So there's one of our killers right there, Detective Bailey. Yep. Who are the other two? They come out. It's Ethan. Mm -hmm. Mindy was right. And Quinn, mm -hmm. who was presumed dead earlier in the movie. Yep. Which made sense of why he wasn't too beaten up. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Yep. Turns out, Detective Bailey is actually Richie Kirsch's dad. Ethan is his son. Quinn is his daughter. Mm -hmm. And they're all big, one big happy family. Yep. One big happy family. Yep. Trying to avenge their son. Yep. So that's the reason they're going after Sam, is because Sam's the one that killed Richie. So they're, they're just targeting her, and they're like, nah, we need to kill you, bro. You remember this, right? The whole scene? The whole scene. Yeah. You want to take it from here? Sure. So uh, so they, they give their classic, like, this is who we are. This is why we're doing this speech. <laughs> and then... Um, I love when Sam goes, he, he was so pathetic. He's yeah. Like, he died like a bitch. <laughs> yeah, he does. She started talking mad shit about him. He and then cried he's, as I slid his throat. Yeah, and then, and then he's, he's like, he's like uh, uh, no, he wasn't. He's a good kid. He no, was a no. young stallion. Yeah, no, he, he's, he's great. Yeah, they, they say weird shit about him. Yeah. And then, yeah, she was like, nah, he's kind of a bitch <laughs> and then he gets so pissed off quinn and, rushes yeah she gets so fed up and tara has a brick and she smacks a shit out of mm. quinn and her teeth fly out yep yeah so there's a big fight big struggle uh that goes on between everybody eventually tara and sam start getting the upper hand of this mm -mm. so they see that there's an exit door up yep. on like the upper stage level yeah. they both they run up there and they are about to like try to get there and then uh, tara falls off doesn't she Detective Bailey starts shooting at her. Yeah, so she trips and is about to fall off this balcony, but then Sam grabs her, and they're locking arms. But then Ethan wakes up, who has been previously knocked out, and starts swiping at her feet, trying to get her. So there's a big struggle, and then he's trying to like lift her up, lift her up, lift her up. Or uh, Sam's trying to lift up Tara this whole time. And then in the middle of this, you look over, and then Quinn is walking towards her with the knife. She's scraping it against the metal of yeah. the railing and shit like that, just trying to freak her out, because Sam now knows, I either have to get stabbed by Quinn or let go of Tara. So they have this really like emotional, like Tara's just like, let me go. I got it. I got this. Just let me we go. We forgot to say that Sam grabbed a Billy's knife. Yeah. She's as soon as, so she has Billy's knife in her, like, yeah. What when she, call, like her little belt loop. Yeah. When she got the, she grabbed that when she got the call about, um, about Kirby. Yeah. Cause he was like, he was like, get the fuck out of there. And, and then she, he was, she was like, we can't, and then he was like, then get a fucking weapon and get ready. So she has a knife. Yeah. So she lets go of Tara. And after giving her the knife. Yes. After s handing her the knife, she lets go of Tara. Tara falls down on top of Ethan. Struggle for a little bit. Ethan uh, stabs her in the gut. Yeah. Yeah. He, she gets a little, she gets a little prick. And then she goes ape shit on Ethan. She stabs him in the mouth. <laughs> yes. She stabs him directly into his mouth and then twists it. Again, she's going fucking crazy. And then we go back up. She originally, Sam has... She has Kirby's gun because she has Kirby's Ethan, gun, Ethan yeah. had attacked Kirby previously. Yeah, so she shoots Quinn in the head. Yeah. And like it's a straight through the fucking <laughs> dome shot, too. And then... Detective Bailey's up there. He walks through. She goes to shoot again, but she's out. So it just... Mm -hmm. Yep. And then they... Um, they have a little brawl. They, they, they fall. They fall on top of all the old uh, ghost face memorabilia. Mm -hmm. Detective Bailey wakes up and she's not there. Mm -hmm. He goes on stage and sees that Billy's Loomis's full costume is gone. Yep. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. So she. So Sam has put on his full costume, incl mask included. Yeah. Talk about going ape shit. She stabs him. I think. I think the count was thirty-one times. Yeah. Because she calls him. Yeah. She calls him and does the voice. Yeah. The yeah. whole ghost. Ghost face voice and it's fucking scary. She's really playing into character here. Pops out, stabs him all. It's like a time. crazy. It's like it's like the way the camera's moving and the way her arms are going. Mm -hmm. It's such a going satisfying fast as fuck. like just <laughs> like yeah, that's Billy's daughter. Yeah, you can <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, and then then Tara comes through like right when she's about to do like a final blow, and then she kind of looks back and she's like, 
nah, that's not who I am. So Sam stops after already stabbing him a thousand fucking times. But then she stabs him in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> and she, after that, she looks over at Tara and she goes, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she goes, she goes, ah, but you did fuck with my family. So, and then stabs him in the eye. Then they uh, have a nice little walkout moment. Yeah. And it turns out almost everyone who got fucking killed survived. Yep. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Chad, Chad is still alive. Mindy's alive. Mm-hmm. Gail's alive. Kirby's alive. Yeah. Everybody's like Loki just chilling. Yeah. Everybody's fine. I get what they're going for with, with Chad. They're trying to make him the next Dewey. Because mm-hmm. Dewey, that was his kind of thing. Was yeah. He would always get attacked and survive. Yeah. But the... So. Do we never got attacked like that? No, not like he that. got fucked up, which I don't think made a lot of sense. It didn't. As made no sense at all. That would have killed. That would have killed Michael Myers. <laughs> that many stabs. Let alone Chad, bro. Yeah, that wasn't Chad. Didn't got it like that. Like Mm-mm, he ain't got it like that. No. Well, that was Scream Six. I really, really enjoyed it. It's uh, it's my favorite horror movie of this year so far. It beat out Megan. I agree. Yeah, I, I liked it. I loved Megan, but this one definitely was. I, I think this one was definitely better. Yeah, I, I was so engaged with it, and mm-hmm. I was really, I was in it from the get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did a very good job of not making any scene boring. No, I didn't. Lo- I didn't drop out of it at all the entire time, which is nice. Yeah. Well, guys, what should we rate it? Let's rate it out of ten. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go nine. I loved it. I was going to say 9.5. 9.5. Okay. Yeah. So this is a great movie. Uh, like we said, if you haven't seen it, you kind of just listen to it. <laughs> but <laughs> and I knew who the killers are. So yeah, definitely don't. go see it. I mean, it's a great watch regardless if you know that or not. So yeah, I mean, it wasn't uh, uh, the, the reveal didn't depend on the story no. too terribly much. No. It's still a great movie, even with that spoiled. So. I think that's what made it such a good movie. Yeah. That it didn't rely on that. Yeah. Like the others do. Nice. Alrighty, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching our Scream 6 episode. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications, baby. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've never said that before. Nope. It was nice. It came off the tongue nice, though. It did. It came it off did. very natural <laughs> over there. <laughs> it sounded like it was a part of the fucking... Yeah, it really did. ...ending speech there. Yep. You want to hear an ending speech? Here it is. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode of Creep It 100. If you like this week's episode, please feel free to rate, review, like, and subscribe to our show. These actions help the show get discovered, and they let us know how you feel. You may even get a special shout-out on an upcoming episode. For the most up-to-date information, visit our website at creepit100pod.com where you can sign up for our newsletter, play back any of our previous episodes, check out our community events calendar, and more. You can also follow us on our social media pages, including TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Creepit100Pod. We also want to say thank you so much to all of our donors and sponsors who helped make this season possible. Because of your contributions, we were able to improve the production value of our show by purchasing new equipment. Your donations also let us continue with our production. And for that, we're extremely grateful. If you are looking for even more creepy content, including behind-the-scenes footage, bonus episodes, and live recording sessions, you can join our premium Discord server. For as low as $5 a month, you can unlock exclusives you won't be able to find anywhere else and support the show while doing so. Check out our membership tiers and benefits at creepit100pod.com slash discord. Join us every Monday for new episodes, and don't forget to creep it 100. <laughs>